Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of PowerShell Bytes. Today's episode is part two in a series for managing users on macOS with PowerShell. And throughout this series, we're gonna be building different advanced functions to do various user management tasks on the Mac. In last episode, we created a function that retrieved user accounts and their various user attributes. And in this, today's episode, we'll be creating a function that creates new user accounts on the Mac. Now, before we jump into the code, I just wanna say if there's anything in these videos that I say that is incorrect or you need some clarification on, please go ahead and comment below. And the code for this episode and any episode in this series, I will be posting in the description of this video. I'll, I'll be posting a link for that. And I'll also be posting a link for a module that I manage on GitHub that this whole series is based off of. So with that, we'll go ahead and jump into the code. Today we are going to pick up where we left off on episode 15, and we're gonna be building a commandlet, or technically an advanced function, to create new user accounts on the Mac. So I'll start typing commandlet and hit return. That's a little snippet that'll lay out the structure for an advanced function. And we'll name this new local user. Now we have several different parameters here. We're gonna start with the name parameter. And we're gonna go ahead, go ahead and accept multiple values here. Call that name. And then we're gonna have a display name. And a password. Now we're gonna go ahead and just make this a string instead of a secure string because the backend command that we're gonna be building on top of the DSCL command uh, only accepts clear text passwords. So I don't see a whole lot of benefit in making this a secure string. And if I'm wrong, please go ahead and comment below. I'm gonna make a password hint parameter for that. And we're gonna go ahead and accept a picture path so people can add a picture for accounts. And I think in last episode, I just called this picture because that's what the user attribute is called in the DSEL command. But um, I think this is a little bit more clear. So I might go back and change that on the get local user account. And then we'll make a switch here for an admin account. So basically if they use this switch, it'll create an admin account. And if they don't, it'll just create a standard user account. We don't need the begin and end block right now. So I'll go ahead and get rid of those. And we'll go ahead and make a couple of these a mandatory parameter. So I'll do that now. Make that true. And we'll go ahead and accept pipeline input as well for the name parameter. The value from pipeline equals true. And we'll go ahead and accept value from, need to add a comma here value from pipeline by property name. And under here for the password, we'll make that mandatory. And I th think that's good. So the first part here, we're gonna go ahead and loop through this name parameter because it might have multiple values. So we'll use a simple for each loop. And we'll just call that in. And we'll loop through that name parameter. Part of creating a user account, we have to create them a unique ID. And so we're gonna go ahead and find out what the current highest number of the unique ID is, and then we'll increment that by one so we can give our uh, account a unique ID. So we'll just use, we'll create a vari variable here. We'll just call it max. UID, and we'll use DSL command to go ahead and list out the user accounts and their unique IDs. We'll go ahead and pipe that to the awk command here. And we'll do something here, I'll try to explain it in just a second. Okay, what's going on here is it's using awk command and basically $2 is the current line item for the second column, 
which will be this unique ID. The first column will be the username. And right here, this will say, does the does that line entry, is it greater than M? Well, at first, M will be nothing, so it will be yes. And if so, that, um, that line entry will be assigned to the variable M. And that will continue throughout the process, so at the very end, M will be the max value of the unique ID. And this in script block will just simply print that variable back and we'll save it to this max ID. Now one thing I'll need to do is I'll actually declare that as an integer because if not, this part that I'm about to do here, we'll just make a variable called next UID and we'll just say max, I, max UID plus one. If I didn't do that, I would just uh, would see that as a string and it would just append this one to that string. So if the highest number is, for instance, 501, it would make it 5011 instead of 502. So it's important to declare that as an integer or cast it somewhere else. So that's good. Now we'll go ahead and start creating the account. We use the DSCL command again. We use create users and we'll go ahead and pass that in variable, which is the current name and the name parameter, the current one that's in the loop. And the way the DSCL command works, I have to basically, for each user property or attribute, I have to create that separately. It doesn't allow me to do it in one command. So we'll do users here, in, we'll do real name, which we are calling the display name. We'll create the password hint, pass that parameter in, I'll actually we'll make this, we'll set the password. And then we'll just pass that password that we have for our parameter. And we'll go ahead and give it the unique ID. Now we'll just put a little logic here to determine if we use the admin switch, and if so, we'll give them an admin account. And we'll make that equal to 80. That is the admin group. And do an else statement here. And if not, we'll just create them a standard user account and we'll add them to the user group 20. We'll assign the picture path. Fix that DSCL. And we'll define a default user shell as just the bin bash. And we'll set the home directory. And we'll just make that the user path with the name. Okay, let me just double check, make sure I typed everything correctly here. It looks good, so we'll go ahead and jump over to the terminal, import this module, and test it out. Now that we're in a terminal, the first thing we'll need to do is go ahead and elevate our privileges, or we'll get a bunch of access denied when we try to create the user account. So if we type in sudo i, it'll prompt me for my password and I'll elevate my privileges. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and I'm going to change directory over into the location where I save that module and then step in the PowerShell. So now we'll import the module that we saved. And we use the force parameter to basically overwrite any changes if we currently have this module loaded. 
and we'll go ahead and use the new local user function that we created. And we'll give it a name parameter here, say test1, do a display name, say test1 account. We'll go ahead and give it a hint, we'll just say guess, and we'll go ahead and give this, make this an admin account. Um, I don't have a picture path memorized, so we'll skip that for now. We'll run this. Oh, I forgot my password, and it's actually prompting me here. So let me put that here. Okay, no errors. That's good. We'll go ahead and use our function that we created in the last episode to see if it created the account. And sure enough, you'll see the account, and it's the unique ID incremented by one. So that is good. Now I'll just go ahead and actually log off this machine and just make sure I can log into it. Log out. Okay, you'll see this account here. That's the display name. If you hit the question mark here, it'll give us our password hint that we created. And I'll go ahead and try to log in here. So this logged in, it seems like the account's fine. I'll go ahead and open up a terminal so we can take a look and just make sure that it created the home folder correctly with all its subfolders. And we'll do an ls command, you'll see the they have desktop downloads, it created all my, fold, all my folders correctly. And you'll see here, indeed, I'm logged in as test one. So that's it, creating users with PowerShell on Mac OS. So we just created an advanced function to create user accounts on the Mac, which is pretty much just a wrapper function around the existing DSCL command in PowerShell. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, it would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe to this channel. And if there's anything that I said incorrectly or that you need clarification on, again, please go ahead and leave a comment. Now, if you'll stay tuned in next episode, we'll be building another advanced function to remove user accounts on the Mac. Thank you for watching.